No job is gonna dictate your happiness. In fact, it is your happiness that dictates your job. Let's talk about that. Now, I believe that I am almost a perfect example of chasing happiness through jobs. Now, my career path has taken me through my PhD to uh, an industry job where I was an explosives chemist working in mines, and then I was back in academia, and then I quit that to start my own uh, percussion business where I was going and giving workshops in schools. And then I was a freelance science communicator. Then I had my own startup and now I don't even know what I'm doing. But my important sort of like finding from all of this is that if you chase happiness through your career or your job, you are not going to find it. You were always kind of thinking, well, I will be happy when. For example, when I was in academia, I was like, oh, I don't want to do all this paper stuff. I'll be happier when I just have a stable amount of income coming in and that I don't have to write papers and grants that my job isn't reliant on me bringing in money um, and that'll be better. And then when I was in when I was in industry, I was like, oh, I'll be happier when I get to interact with students again and I get to lecture and I get to like write papers. And the thing is, is that I spent like 10 years trying all of these different things. Happiness came when I stopped sort of worrying about what I was doing and rather following the things that made me happy. And it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So yes, you have to kind of look at activities where you are filled with joy, happiness, or contentment. Those are sort of like the three pillars of making sure that you are on the right path to happiness. Now, there are a few things that in a job you can get. Money, freedom, security, all of these play such an important role in determining, you know, whether or not that's something you will actually find joy, happiness, or contentment in. And uh, let's talk about those. Let's split down the aspects of a job and whether or not industry or academia actually provide that. And you know, sometimes the answer isn't super, super clear. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now. Okay, this isn't just me saying these things. There are plenty of papers that have been written about career and happiness. Let's go check out a couple of them. All right, so. Does happiness prov promote career success? Revisiting the evidence. So ultimately, we look here, we conclude that the evidence continues to persuasively suggest that happiness is correlated and often precedes career success, and that experimentally enhancing positive emotion leads to improved outcomes in the workplace. Fantastic. Another one. Happiness is not necessarily dependent on our employer, but our perception of our work. Results indicated that participants just demonstrated a, a commitment to follow their interests, what they succeeded in and enjoyed, um, exhibited a breadth of personal competencies and strengths, so i.e. they were able to sort of like have the, a job that matched their personal strengths, and uh, they were able to work in an environment that had freedom, challenge, meaning, and positive social atmosphere. So it's actually about trying to find the answer to quite a complicated question, but these are the main factors, I think, that really dictate whether or not you're gonna be happy in a certain job. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that's money. Now, even though we have been told so many times that money doesn't mean happiness, I know I find it really hard to separate that when I'm faced with a number in front of me. Now, I have chased money in the path. When I went from academia to industry, my wage almost tripled and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't have been happier in that moment. But let me tell you this. The money is just a band-aid. If you are not happy in your job and you look at your bank account, that is just a very quick band-aid that will not last very long. So you may be the richest person on the world, but if you're not happy, what's the point of continuing that role? And that's where I ended up. Um, and I was earning a lot of money and I gave it all away to pursue something that I thought was gonna give me more uh, personal satisfaction, and that is teaching and lecturing at a university, which it really did sort of help 
make that decision much easier. I think that another very important factor that people look at is flexibility or freedom. Now there's no doubt that in academia, I felt like there was more flexibility and freedom. When I was working in a job, when I was working in industry, I felt like it was a nine to five and that my job was dictated by the accountants. Essentially, I would get a phone call that said, Hi Andy, this project is now being killed because it's not earning us any money. And I may have spent so much time on that project, but it was stopping. The flexibility that academia can provide you is something also that isn't necessarily given by default. It's something you earn. So the flexibility in academia is earned through getting grants, through proving yourself, by allowing sort of by your supervisor, allowing you to follow ideas that you like. You know, it is kind of still earn. It's not just like a free for all where it's like, sure, go do whatever you want, good luck. There are still structures, KPIs, things you need to do, but I certainly felt that academia was much more flexible. For example, I could turn up at 10 a.m. and leave at two and no one really questioned anything. Whereas in an industry job, I was punching in, I was punching out and uh, Working nine to five is a bit of a grind and I didn't like that. So I chose flexibility and even in my current thing, what I'm doing now, which is all sorts of stuff, but I really, really value flexibility and freedom over money. Stability is another important factor that we think about when considering different jobs, whether or not we'll be happier in industry or uh, academia. Let me tell you this from my experience, that stability is probably one of the biggest, I would say, lies or misconceptions is that anything can be taken away from you at any moment. In academia, you sort of like apply for certain grants or jobs that have a lifetime. At least that was my experience. Three years contract here, two years contract here, one year contract there. The contracts seem to be getting smaller and smaller. I knew people that were on like two month contracts. That stability is not suitable for a lot of people and they're preferred lifestyle. That brings in so much anxiety that they are not happy. Whereas in industry, it was like I had a job. As long as I turned up nine to five, did what they wanted, um, I would get money and pretty much no one was sort of like, you know, knocking on my door asking me to get grant money for the next three years. The money was there, the business, I was part of a bigger machine. I certainly felt like stability was much better in industry and I've heard, and it's not my experience, I've never been or worked in government, but uh, in government, uh, jobs, it can be even more stable. Now, in academia, stability t seems to come after many, many years of instability. If you are the lucky one to get through all of the short-term contracts, you may get tenure. That tenured position then means that you have stability, but that doesn't mean that you've got a job forever these days. I think a lot of universities are changing to this five-year rolling contract, which means that if you are not performing, you can still be kicked out. It's much harder to get rid of you, but you can still be kicked out. So stability, it's something we talk about, but uh, it's really kind of nothing stable. One of the biggest things is personality factors that determine your happiness in a role. Now for me, when I failed all of these different things, I had to stop and be like, what do I want? I wanted to not sell my time for money. I didn't want a nine to five. I'd had that and I didn't enjoy it. I wanted to help people. I wanted to get online and help people. I wanted to grow assets, which meant that uh, I could, you know, take some time off, but stuff was still coming in. And that is what I'm working towards at the moment. Um, and that's my personality's trait. I don't mind risk. I like working towards a sort of like dream and it fail rather than work in something I hate but know that it's gonna last forever. Like that is worse to me than what I've chosen to do. But there are essentially loads of people that think the complete opposite and you may be one of those people. So it really is about delving deep, scratching below the surface, what actually makes you happy and then trying to find a job that matches what makes you happy rather than trying to be happy through finding a job that uh, you know, you're like, oh, well, when I earn more money, I'll be happy. When I have all this stuff, I'll be happy. It's, it's a weird kind of backwards relationship we've got with that decision. And uh, I think knowing yourself is where it all starts.
Mm, I sound like a hippie wellness retreat. The last thing I would say is that changing your career is perfectly okay. I found a study. I found this study, Happiness and Radical Career Change Among New Zealanders. You may not be a New Zealander, but I think it still applies. Essentially, they had a look at highly educated people that change careers, and they found that they were working longer, having less holidays, and they um, had income and socioeconomic status drop after the change, but they were happier. Isn't that just sort of like all encompassing of what we're just talking about? Status, money, really a lot of people can derive short-term happiness from, but in the long term, working towards what you actually sort of like makes you happy means that you'll be able to put up with the struggles, you'll feel more rewarded, you'll get a sense of personal achievement. All of that is so important. And yeah, change is good if you are working towards what makes you happier. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about happiness and whether or not you'll find it in academia or industry. Let me know in the comments what you think and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide, and I'll see you in the next video.